Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Kaiwaza with you. I'm just imbibing of some nice iced tea. It's Sunday noonish, a little too early for a cocktail. Well, you know, for me. So I'm just having some iced tea before I go record shopping. I'm gonna go to the record shops today, a couple of them. I haven't been in quite a while, so I'm gonna head out and just uh, Probably just browse, probably won't even buy anything. I mean, famous last words. I don't think they're having their indoor sidewalk sale at Ideas. So um, yeah, just see. But I want to bring to you the um, second part of my haul. These are Hawaiian records that I have gotten recently. And today I think I have some quite interesting ones and little stories to go along with them sort of emotional adventures in record shopping. So let's get started. Um, first off, not really that interesting, but um, this is a 1950 recording of uh, South Pacific, the Rogers and Hammerstein musical um, selections from their recording of it, of course, not the not the original film or Broadway recording, but all the record companies, uh, South Pacific was so successful, so all of the record companies really did their own version of South Pacific. This was RCA Victor. It's Al Goodman and his orchestra. Now, when I saw this, I was like, oh, I already have this one. I'm not going to get it. But I looked at it, I looked at this, this soloist name and I thought, you know, I maybe I don't. Because this is what I was thinking of that I have. Um, it is a later South Pacific um, by Al Goodman. But it is a different recording. This one is a later recording that was put out on budget labels. You can find this, this exact album with uh, different covers by different budget label records. I kind of like this one, but there's some other ones too. Um, and yeah, I should do a video on, uh, I have quite a few records, recordings of South Pacific, because I pick them up for cheap, only cheap, only when I find them cheap. I don't spend money on them because I'm not particularly fond of the musical South Pacific. Um, but I do think it, you know, if you're doing all Hawaiian exotica collection, whatever, it does belong there. So I've ended up with quite a number of South Pacific recordings. And I guess I should do a video just showing them because it's quite a lot. And this one was, uh, yeah, this was different. These are the soloists on it. Something I wanted to mention that I find interesting. I don't know if you comment on this or whatever, but with South Pacific uh, recordings, that are not, Juanita Hall played Bloody Mary, who is the Tonkinese woman um, who's like a merchant, right? And that's kind of historically accurate. I mean, that's sort of, there were a lot of, um, I mean, mostly now we say Vietnamese, but I guess back in the day, Tonkinese, it's a certain area of Vietnam uh, that a lot of people left and went out into some of the Pacific Islands oftentimes merchants um, <clears throat> and but Juanita Hall played her in the original and she's an African-American and what I find interesting on some of these later recordings that are not of the Broadway or the film is that whoever they get to sing the Juanita Hall song basically uh, Bally High would Bally High would be the famous one or, uh, you know, um, Bloody Mary, the songs that she sang, they often get an African-American singer to sing those songs. And I just find that curious. I'm just sort of like, why? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because they're just singing. It's not a film or whatever. They're just like, do they think... I don't know, like an African-American singer in the 50s had some sort of inflection that was more Tonkinese than, <laughs> than some other ethnic group would have. I don't know. It's kind of a curious thing, but hmm. anyway, this one, I have to say, um, 
Something else interesting about this, I'm talking way too much about this record for not caring about it, aren't I? is that there's only eight songs on it. So um, although this is a 12 inch record, you can tell from the look of it that it was also issued as a 10 inch record, which was still around at that time. There were 10 inch long plays and 12 inch long plays. And the 10 inch would have just been, this is the cover. They would have used the same, printed the same thing and just <clears throat> only this would have been showing on a 10 inch and on the 12 inches, just this. And they didn't, interestingly, usually the 12 inch version of an album would have a couple more songs on it that were omitted from the uh, 10 inch. And they also would do like 45 RPM sets on some of these that usually had omitted a song or two. Uh, but this one, apparently they only did eight songs. So if you got the 10 inch or the 12 inch, you got the same amount of music, which is kind of odd. Anyway, that's RCA Victor's South Pacific with Al Goodman and his orchestra. Sorry, my voice is getting a little bit um, <clears throat> scratchy. I'm not sick. I just take this medicine, medication that um, sometimes I'll lose my, kind of lose my voice for an hour or so. And it just happens to be happening now, but I'm not going to stop because I'm just going to continue. Nortriptyline. Yeah, it makes my um, voice kind of scratchy. This next album is interesting really just for one reason and that it was recorded at the Hawaiian Inn on the Gulf uh, Gulf Boulevard St. Pete Beach St. Petersburg or St. Pete Beach Florida um, and it is I don't know what to say exactly about this record, but it's Mr. Fatu. Lord Almighty, I'm going to tell you what you're rising, 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 rising. Higher, higher, it's very true to my soul. Oh, go, go, go. So, who is Mr. Fatu? Well, he is a performer at the Aloha Lounge of the Hawaiian Inn. Um, and... So this is him right here, and then he has his little backup band. Obviously, you can hear from the music, he's like an Elvis impersonator. Not a bad one, either. Well, gone up the end of the lonely street. Love you as a lonely baby. Love you as a lonely baby. Love you as a lonely baby. That is Mr. Fred Canova, who is the owner of the Hawaiian Inn. Anyway, um, it's on their own sort of private label with no whatever. But his, uh, his if I can pronounce it, it's a little bit hard, Samoan name. He's a native of Samoa. Uh, let's see. Called Mr. Fatu, but his full name is uh, Fatu Lao O Le Toia, no, Lawe Tolo. Lawe Lo Tolo. <laughs> Lao O Le Tolo, yeah. Fatu Lao O Le Tolo. And his backup band, and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce all of that, but Mr. Fatu. It's, um, it's fine. I mean, he's like an Elvis impersonator, and he does a couple of other impersonations. What I'm curious about, though, is he doesn't, uh, Interestingly, on this album, for performing at a Hawaiian inn and doing Elvis, is that there's no Hawaiian songs on it. And Elvis actually um, has quite a history with Hawaii and, you know, filmed a, f a couple of movies here and spent some time here and has a couple of albums of Hawaiian music. So I don't know why he didn't, Mr. Fatu at the Aloha Lounge at the Hawaiian inn didn't they didn't seem fit to record him doing Blue Hawaii or Hawaiian Wedding Song or any of the many Hawaiian songs that he recorded. I don't know why, but they didn't. Uh, and I'll show you briefly, I do have one other, I only have one other one. I don't know if there's any more, but I have one other record that was also performed at the Hawaiian Inn. I've already shown this a long time ago, but I wanna show it just to show you too which is uh, Rose Natane, 
Welcome to my world. Um, this one is Hawaiian, does have a Hawaiian size on it. Uh, Rose Naitani and the Tonga Islanders. Now, interestingly, they uh, performed at the Exotic Con Tiki Supper Club. Mr. Fatu performed at the Aloha Lounge. I'm not familiar with the Hawaiian Inn. I don't know what the layout was, but apparently Rose did the uh, supper luau shows. And I guess later on in the evening when you went just out for cocktails, it was Mr. Fatu. Of the two, if you happen to be someplace and you had to make a choice between them, this one is Hawaiian. I would definitely choose this one. But, you know, maybe you have an Elvis thing. I don't really. Yorana. You know, these days, everybody is looking for a tonic. A cure-all for all the maladies of the modern world. I feel the best tonic is music. And you can hear the music of my land, Polynesia. On the all-final online radio station called Hawaiian Hi-Fi. On Live 365. The soothing tonic from the islands. Hawaiian Hi-Fi. It's free 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The link is below in the description. Well, alrighty then, moving right along. Uh, now, if you know me, you know I don't usually buy reissues of things, you know, recent reissues, because, you know, they're pretty pricey, and I'd just as soon have the original one if it's not crazy. In this case, the original price one very seldom shows up, and when it does, it's like $100 or something ridiculous. And I saw a quite reasonably priced one appear uh, well, it's a new reissue, I guess, and it was quite reasonably priced on eBay, so I got one. It took a long time to get here. There were delays at the factory, etc., etc., but it finally did arrive. And I was kind of excited to listen to it because, honestly, I remember seeing this record. I know of its existence. I don't remember anything from it, and I used to work at KCCN Hawaiian Radio. Um... And I know we had this record, but I just don't remember DJs really playing it or anybody paying any attention to it. So uh, I was curious, like, why, why, why the great demand for this record? So I got it. It's Louie. This is a 2020 reissue. It looks exactly the same as the original. Recorded at the Maui Surf uh, Hotel, Kaanapali Ka Beach, Maui. This is Louis Williams and his backup. It's a backup band, like a lounge singer at the at the hotel, right? That's Louis. She's nestled by the sea, Kaanapali, waiting there for me. And I have to say, you know, uh, it also was a private pressing originally. Um, after listening to it, I was a little bit baffled, you know, kind of like, like, this is okay. This is fine. It's nothing I would get super excited about. There isn't really a hit song on it. It's like... I still don't get why this was so, this was popular enough to merit a reissue, you know, that there was enough interest in it because I just don't really, it's okay, but I don't, yeah, I don't, it doesn't, nothing, it's, it's like a lounge band guy. It's okay. It's not worth a hundred dollars if I was trying to get the original, no way. I don't even think it was worth the, I think I paid like 40, 40 altogether or something for it. Mm. Anyway, I have it, have it done with it. Eh, not that exciting. 
Okay, now another. I have a little story here about this one. <clears throat> okay, so on eBay one day, I see this record that I've not ever seen before. I assume it to be a European record because there is nudity on the cover and that's usually just European records do that because they've never cared there and it's just there. It's the American ones where they, you know, everything's sort of hidden and covered up. But I mean, this is not, I guess it isn't really showing anything, but it is nudity. So if you don't want to see nudity, look away. But I saw this record called Hawaiian Love Songs. Now, I was just interested because I thought, well, what is this? And the, the seller who I noticed had either sold nothing yet, was a new seller or only had sold a couple things, said it was on Hula Records, Polani Vaughn. And I'm like, no, that is not Polani. Polani Vaughn does have a song, a very nice album called Hawaiian Love Songs, but this is not it, not what it is. So um, I, uh, <clears throat> I thought, he, and he posted a picture of the titles as well, but it was extremely um, unclear. Very, everything was very unfocused in both pictures. And I, I really tried to make out what they were, but I could tell they were weird titles, right? I could tell um, there were song, titles that weren't the normal titles. So I thought it piqued my interest and I really wanted to find out more. And I, I contacted him and said, hey, this is not Polani Vaughn Hula Records. It's not. Um, and then he changed it, it was by Polani, but he never changed that it was Hula Records or whatever, because it's not. Um, <clears throat> and it was like $35 or something, and I thought, I'm not, I'm curious about this, but I'm not gonna pay that much, because I don't know, it might be something new and unique that I've not heard. It might just be, you know, Lupe Leilani recordings or it's some compilation of other stuff that I have that they just made up, I don't know. So I didn't buy it. But it came back several times up for like $35. It would come back up. It would run its course and he would relist it. So I contacted him one time and said, look, <clears throat> if you ever decide you're, you know, you don't want to, you want to sell this thing. If you decide you actually want to sell this thing, because I don't think anybody's going to pay $35 for it. Um, I'll give you 25. I'll give you 25 if you ever want to just sell it. Uh, so after it ran its course a couple more times, I didn't hear anything back, but maybe like two months later, um, he said, okay, you know, if you're interested, I'll do it. And so he set up a private whatever thing and I bought it for 25 or buy it now or whatever. Well, so when I saw the titles, I was still, I was like, oh, I don't know. What is this going to be? Hmm. And it was disappointing. I have to say it was disappointing because all what this is, it's a compilation of, <clears throat> there's no artist credits on here, but it's a comp compilation of some Billy Muir Hawaiian recordings who was on a lot of budget records. Uh, there are selections from his Hawaiian s percussion album on Strand. There are selections from Lawrence Welk's steel guitar Hawaiian album, uh, Song of the Islands, I think it's called. And there are selections from Fillmore Orchestra, Polynesian Paradise, which is a fantastic record. Um, and they just gave fake names and not the right names, you know, White Sands of Wahiki, Farewell, My Lari, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Hawaiian flamingo winds of paradise. Just P Hawaii. It's pink Hawaii up here, and there's just P Hawaii and sleepwalk. So, yeah, I was disappointed. So I paid more for this than I would have, and went through months of kind of like waiting, and then I'm like, Ugh. so right after that, something amazing happened. It was like the universe, you know, kind of balancing out. One bad thing happens or a disappointing thing happens, and then another great thing has happened. Well, <clears throat> also for a while, I had found on Discogs, one of my favorite groups is the Waikikis. They're from Belgium, we're from Belgium. And they did instrumental, very SpongeBob SquarePants Hawaiian music. They wrote a lot of their own material. I love them, and I thought I had 
everything, but maybe one album that might have a, a song Le Cinema on it that's not, that I know is a single, that's not on any of the other albums I have. So I thought they might, they might have one other album, but probably not. Well, um, Waikiki's, if you don't know, this is their, probably their most famous album. They did have a hit in the United States called Hawaii Tattoo that was actually a much larger hit in Europe, was a top hit in many countries in Europe, and was popular here in the United States. My mother actually went out and bought Hawaii Tattoo, the single, when I was a little kid um, that, from this album, but they did like a million albums. And on Discogs one day appeared this thing that wasn't for sale, but it was in existence called In the Mood with the Wakey Keys. So I put that, of course, on my want list, thinking you're never going to find it. I mean, it's, I'm 59 years old. It's been, you know, 40 years, really more than 40 years. Act, yeah, 50 years, 50 years, more than 50 years actively searching for Hawaiian records. Um, you never saw this record. You're probably never going to find it because it's not, it wouldn't have gotten to America. It was a, this was a European release. It probably never was reissued in America and you're probably just never going to find him. So I kind of just put it in the back of my mind. And then one day, randomly, when I went on Discogs, there was a copy for sale. Of course, I bought it immediately. I didn't even care how much it was. It was like $29. I thought, it's the Wakey Keys. I mean, we're getting this record. And then it came in the mail eventually. It came from Switzerland. Uh, this is a Belgian release on Palette, which is the original label that they recorded on. They're a studio band. I mean, they never went on tour or anything. Uh, but check out the song tracks on this. It's so interesting. Mississippi, by the way, is actually Swanee River. I don't know why they called it Mississippi. Uh, My Yiddish Mama is an old song that people, Broadway artists and whatnot, used to perform. Hawaiian Hora is actually um, Hava Negila, the uh, Israeli song. River Kwai. Um, I mean, what weird selections. American Patrol, Auld Lang Syne. That's all about these songs being done by the Waikikis because I love them. <clears throat> Again, I was somewhat disappointed when I got the album and played it because it's like, um, mm, it's good and upon repeated listenings now I do like it, but at first I was a little bit disappointed because of the production. This is the only Waikiki, I think there's one other one that was a later one. This is from the 70s, like 1973, one of their later ones also was produced the same way, which is that it's in the production. The steel guitar is too close. There's not enough reverb on it. It sounds like you're literally sitting there playing it in front of you without any reverb. Steel guitar usually, I love, uh, is usually recorded with a fair amount of reverb because it, it you know, gives it space and feeling, a little bit of an echo, and sometimes, um, some even record with a lot of reverb and it sounds like it's, you know, over on that island over there, you hear the steel guitar coming from. And I really like that. I, and this one, I just felt like the steel guitar was not enough reverb and it just really detracted from it. I'm trying to figure out, there, <clears throat> there must be a program or something I can get where I could just add my own reverb <laughs> to it. But upon multiple listenings, I mean, I do like it and I'm happy to have it. So I'm happy to say I have this Waikiki's record I didn't even know existed. Really happy about that. <clears throat> and then finally, to kind of round out the experience of having been somewhat disappointed with a couple of releases, even though I was happy to get them, uh, something appeared that <clears throat> I'd never heard of, I didn't know about. I was like, Oh, what the heck? It was on Discogs. Let's just get it. It came from Switzerland also. And it is a Swiss recorded album by some band. I had no idea who they were. I saw the song listings and thought, okay, well, this is something. I don't know. These are all mostly like original songs. I don't know what these songs are. So let's just get it. 
And when it came, I was so happy and so surprised because it really is. It's everything this record wasn't. It sounds like the Waikiki's. I'm telling you, it's uh, the Aloma Hawaiians. Eric Frank Hauser and his Aloma Hawaiians. And for all the world, they sound like the Wakey Geeks. The steel playing, everything. And the, the songs, the original songs that are on here, they sound like, they're just like songs the Wakey Geeks would have written. It's not them, because they do list all of the band members in here. This record is from 1979, which would be post Wakey Keys when they were no longer recording. But this is not, I thought maybe, oh, maybe some of the members, you know, it might be some of the same people, but it isn't. It's all different people. Here they are performing, being their best selves. There are a couple songs of, uh, ooh, sorry, nudity. A couple of songs um, where the lady is singing, only two, I think, and she actually does pretty good Tahitian. Her pronunciation, I'll tell you, for being a European was pretty spot on, because a lot of times they really massacre the, the language there, but pretty good. Other than a couple of songs, just two with her singing, they're all instrumentals, almost all originals, and they sound like the Waikiki's and they're awesome and I love them. It's like a bikini bottom, SpongeBob SquarePants party. Just let you know EMR International Productions, 1979. Super happy to get this one. <laughs> okay. So that's my update. Oh, those are the Hawaiian records. Sorry for my voice again. Those are the Hawaiian records I've gotten this past uh, several months. <clears throat> so we're all up to date now. So if you want to check those selections from those out, they are currently up and running on Hawaiian Hi-Fi Radio, and the link for that is below. And I hope you have a wonderful week, and please comment if you have any of these records or thoughts about them or Hawaiian music in general, whatever. I'd love to hear from you. So have a good day. I'm going to finish up my tea. I'm going to go to the record stores and see if anything's new. We'll talk to you later.